it, it made so much noise. One best picture. It's a thriller, it's a dark comedy, it's horror sometimes. Great twist. Great yeah. twist. Roughly one-fifth of the South Korean population went to go see this in theaters. Hello, everybody. It is time once again uh, for the Cinefix Top 100. I'm Clint Gage, and joining me is IGN's Director of Video Programming and Pièce de Résistance... Michael Calibro. Hey, Clint. How's it going? It's doing doing really well. It's going really well, too, for that matter. Also, IGN's senior news editor, Alex Stedman. And Alex, who has just uh, climbed the charts to number six all-time biggest Terminator 2 fan. Congratulations. I'm going to get that number one spot. Look out top five yep. for now, yep. I think. We're four episodes into this new show. Our producer, Dan, still has not told us how he created this list. Mm -mm. The three of us really poured over our, our souls, frankly, put our, our hearts and souls into our personal top 100 movies of all time. Mm -hmm. Then through some sort of witchcraft or al alchemy of, of some uh, unnatural sort, Dan has made the Cinefix Top 100 and refuses to tell us how. Uh, but we're here to talk about another entry on the Cinefix Top 100 today. You guys ready? Yeah. Super ready. What's this Dan pick Do you want, this it, you want the Dan pick? What's the Dan pick? Yeah. This we're going to travel us. all the way back to yesteryear, way back to the year 2019. Oldie? For Parasite. Oh, but goodie. Ooh. Oldie but a goodie. Ugh. Sneaking up on a half a decade. <laughs> <laughs> Feels so <laughs> long ago, really, though. Let's talk pedigree of this movie. Like, this, it, it wound up on some of our lists, mm -hmm. I, I hope, if, <laughs> if it ended up on the main <laughs> Cinefix Top 100. So, I mean, Parasite, uh, like I said, back in 2019, uh, directed by Bong Joon-ho, who, you know, it, it made so much noise. Mm -hmm. It won Best Picture. Yeah. It was the first non-English language film to win Best Picture, the mm -hmm. Academy Awards. It won Palme d'Or at, at Cannes. It won Best Picture, one of only three movies to actually do that. The others were Marty from 1955, which was uh, Ernest Borgnine, an Ernest Borgnine joint. Um, and then the other one was our, our buddy uh, Billy Wilder uh, did that for The Lost Weekend. One oh. Palme d'Or and Best Picture. Right. So one of three movies to ever do that. It also won for screenplay, foreign language film, and Bong Joon-ho won for uh, Best Director as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, rarefied air in yeah. terms of the awards consideration that it got, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Also, like, Best Picture nominees that year. Hell of a year. Real interesting year. What was it up against? All right, so let's, let's go. I, yeah. I think we'd all disagree on what <laughs> was the best Can't picture. wait. Right? So it's uh, Green Book, I, which I know is everybody's here favorite, of course. favorite mm -hmm. yep. Academy Award film. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, also another classic. You're reading off the wrong list. No, I'm Because Green Book won. Wait. <laughs> Green Book won. <laughs> wait, so this is... We're so talking about 2019. Yeah. It came out in 2019, so I guess it, so would, it would, would be the 2020, 2020 Academy yeah. Awards. In yeah, your yeah. defense, the naming convention for the Oscars is very silly. Yeah, confusing. it's very silly. It yeah. was released in 2019, came out in 2020. That's it. Yeah. All right. So, so we can stop talking about Green okay, Book. Okay, so yeah, finally, let's never do it again. the National Nightmare is yeah. over. Yeah. I still miss The Favorite, though. I'm a big fan of that. Oh, the I did love The Favorite. Yeah, the Favorite yeah. was real good. Okay, so it was Parasite, 1917, uh -huh. Ford vs. Ferrari, great dad film. Yep. Yep. Right? Dad's everywhere. Rejoice. Ford vs. Ferrari is here. Joker. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, The Irishman, Little Women, Jojo Rabbit, and Marriage Story. Okay, it's not a bad year. No, that's that's not a bad, pretty bad stiff competition. There's some, uh, there's some movies in there that are very like, the expanded field was kind to you. Yeah. The movies, I think. Uh, you know, I don't, Jojo Rabbit was, I don't think that needs to be in no there. No offense to I dads know. everywhere, but Ford, Ford versus, versus Ferrari, Ferrari, I don't exactly. know. Yeah. I, it was good. It was really, I, like, I think it won for, like, sound editing. And it won yeah. for some of the post yeah. awards Yeah, which year. I would give it to. Yeah, yeah which uh, deservedly yeah. so, because it sounded amazing and all that good stuff. Right. But, yeah, it's very... Dad film. But dad Joker film. was yeah. great. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I liked a lot. I think that. I, I, think, I, I think, like Joker. I, I think Joker sneaking in on the uh, the, the expanded interest. Jo yeah, too. Joker. Joker is very much a, a a thanks to ironically enough the Dark Knight. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, like Joker's getting in there on an expanded field. Yeah. Marriage Story was good though. Yeah, Marriage Story. Yeah. Was yeah. Good. But Parasite. Yeah. Better than all of them? Absolutely. Yes. Or at least there's, Without there's, a doubt. I don't think you can... It's not like you can't make the argument that it should have won. Like, it won yeah. on, on the merits. Yeah. Right? For sure. I mean, in terms of what we love about this movie, like, I mean, what... Alex, I know you're a big fan so, of So, I mean, kind of staying on that Oscars beat, I think when something is that is of that kind of awards pedigree, it's kind of, like, kind of waved away as a certain kind of movie, right? Like, it's awards bait. But the thing I love about Parasite is it's 
incredibly entertaining. In fact, I would argue it's one of the more entertaining Best Picture winners of like the past 20, 30 years. It's hilarious. Yeah. It's hilarious. It never stops. It's a thriller. It's a dark comedy. It's horror sometimes. Great twist. Great yeah. twist. And like, that's the thing. Like Right in the middle, too. Right. Yeah. Oh, you my know? God. And it turns, and we're going to talk about it yeah, in we'll our get there. scene, we'll get but like there. when it turns into a completely different yep. movie... Oh my gosh! So I love that, and I'm and I'm a big Bong Joon Ho girl. Like he's probably my favorite director, Bong Hai for life. And <laughs> this is really up there in terms of my favorite movies of his. I mean, he doesn't make a bad movie, but I just he's really like mastered his own craft with this one. Like he yeah. is a genre bender, and you can't put this movie in a box for a second. You can put it in a house though. Yeah, a glass house. Yeah. Don't throw a rock. A uh, fake it. house that they built from scratch. Yeah. yeah, which was a surprising thing for me to learn when I was re-watching this. But we'll I get mean, to, you we'll kind of have to. Too. It's so important to the movie. Like, I hate saying, like, oh, it's a character, but it's kind of a character in the movie. It's, it's 100%. Yeah. yeah. You know, thematically speaking, then. Like, yeah. it's, it's, you know, the... There's been a strong vein, just in the past couple of years, of Eat the Rich movies. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, right. I, I this mean, is Triangle of Sadness came out recently. I mean, Glass I, I, Onion. Yeah. I mean, TV, a lot we got of, Succession, I mean, White Lotus. This was a Eat the Rich follow-up to his previous Eat the Rich film, which was... Which, uh, Snowpiercer, mm -hmm. Snowpiercer, which was yeah. literally about, well, no, that was eating bugs, but yeah, but I mean, <laughs> it's about, it's all about class struggle, right? Yeah, right, right. And in a perpetual motion train, that makes no sense. <laughs> oh, right. You know, <laughs> the kids just they get small hands; they're you able know. to get in there. But I, well, now that we're talking about Snowpiercer, I mean, you already you say that Parasite is probably his best work. I I'd agree with so that. So I I, I, would I agree go with that I go well. I go back and forth. I really love Memories of Murder, and I think there's yeah. a lot of through line b between Parasite and Memories of Murder. There's a real desperation at like the heart of both of them. Like obviously Parasite, you know, the Kims are desperate just to get by because of their socioeconomic right. status. But like, you know, in Memories of Murder, it, he's desperate to solve this crime and it like right. nearly eats him alive. Bong never makes two movies that are the same, but there's through lines in all of them. Like, like, like I said, like you can't put any of them in a specific genre. And I, so my, my favorite two are Parasite and Memories of Murder, and they always go back and forth for me. I think Mother is... Mother's great, too. Really I love Mother. Good. He doesn't yeah. make a bad movie. Yeah, no, he's... So so, what do you think about Snowpiercer? You're, you're getting antsy over there. I mean, I disagree. Just, Listen. Uh, don't, don't, don't do it. Just, just don't do it. <laughs> there's just so much wrong with that film. Like, I like the idea of eating the rich, right? But my, my main problem with that movie is I just, it couldn't suspend my disbelief. The entire time I watched that movie, and we're talking about how, like, the world is destroyed, and there's a, there's a train going around the earth in the worst atmospheric conditions possible that requires no maintenance of any kind. And let me just say, based on current events, even with up-to-date tracks, we can't seem to keep trains on the rails. And, hold on, the thing that even, the thing that even angers me about that movie is that they are, they are aware of the fact that I'm failing to suspend my disbelief on this perpetual motion train, that's, perpetual motion train that somehow didn't derail. Because there's, an, there's a literal instructional movie in that movie where they're just like, everybody thought he was crazy for trying to think of a train, but he did it! And it's just like, ugh. You know, we just got done a few episodes ago talking about Independence Day. <laughs> You're talking about suspension of disbelief. Like, I don't know. I think Snowpiercer. It's it's a sci-fi movie. You're supposed it's supposed to be a little far-fetched sometimes. It's about it's about the statement. Yeah, but I believe aliens have advanced technology. I don't think that we came up with a better train that could just like suspend. I have just, just all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. guys, guys, train's been great. What if we had a better train? You know what? Truth be told, maybe it shouldn't have been. It should have been a submarine. Because really, what difference does it make if it's a freaking train or a submarine? That would have been less exciting. It would have been less see, cinematic. You can't see yeah. a polar bear at the end of a submarine movie. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's the whole thing. It wouldn't have derailed. <laughs> Uh, well, I listen, mean, speaking of derailing yeah. our conversation <laughs> about <laughs> Parasite, talking about a straight line, like a through line through Bong Joon-ho's well, work, yeah. there's satire, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of satire and there's a lot of the, you know, wealth inequality and disparity and class mm -hmm. struggle and all. Like that is through just about every, even like in, in Mother, there is, uh, we live in a society mm -hmm. of Bong Joon-ho movies where, you know, things aren't created equal for everybody. Mm -hmm. And one more through line, by the way, that I want to make sure I mention is Song King ho um, one of the, I think one of the greatest actor-director pairings of our time, and he was in Memories of Murder, mm -hmm. The Host, he was in Snowpiercer. I, I love them together, Bong and Song. Would we call this a masterpiece? I sure as hell would. Yeah. Yeah. 
For sure. I mean, like... It's doing everything right? It's doing everything right, and it's doing everything right, especially when you, like, look at it relative to movies that are trying to send the same, like, a similar message. And yeah. I'm not going to bring up Snowpiercer again. I'm just going to literally say <laughs> Snowpiercer. <laughs> but, like, I also think that this movie is a is a superior film than um, Triangle of Sadness, which also oh, touches yeah. on a lot of these themes, and, like, this just does it in a way, a way more, like, intense, entertaining, and just, like relatable way where triangle of sadness starts strong but mm -hmm. like once it gets all uh lord of the flies it kind of kind of loses its, well, it kind of loses steam for me i won't make, start ranting another, about triangle of sadness make another which train I, pun there yeah thank you <laughs> i won't start ranting about triangle because i didn't like it but i think one thing that parasite has that triangle didn't is a real empathy like you can really empathize with these characters even as they're doing terrible terrible things like even when the kims are kind of screwing over this other you know working class family who are just trying to get by like you understand why they're doing it and you even see mr kim being like oh i don't know but like he still does it and you even kind of feel for like the parks sometimes like yeah madame is like rich but she's like nice like you know, like you can't really hate her because she's for so the stupid. most part yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, blissfully it, ignorant right. yeah yeah and I, I i love how just empathetic and it's very human and especially and again i bring up that desperation i think yeah. that's something that's that bong is really great at capturing that kind of i'm gonna do whatever i need to do to protect myself to protect my family and that's the best thing i can do yeah. there's a lot of like the end point of a line of logic yeah. That, that's being dealt with here. It's, it's just like, you know, here, here are the class disparities that we're dealing with. Like, mm -hmm. here's the Kim family versus, you know, juxtaposed with the Park family. Like, the Kims living in a semi-basement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just you know, which barely is like above, halfway just underground. Barely yeah. 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 Um, and then the Parks living, literally, you have to go upstairs to actually get to their first floor of their house. Yeah. Um, and, and going straight to the end of the line of logic of just, like, how can we take advantage of a system that's like stacked against us and the answer mm -hmm. is like you're you're a, a hustling con family you right know? <laughs> and, and the thing is they're genius like yeah. I, and I, I go back to and not to get too much into art of the scene but I always go back to that scene where they're um, getting the housekeeper out and it's not just that they get a little bit of peach fuzz and like sprinkle no. it over her yeah, yeah, yeah. it's that then Mr. Kim goes and like films her like talking to a doctor no. and then he like spills the sauce all over her tissue yeah. it's genius not, not only that they like write scripts right yeah. like oh they, God, they, they like, rehearse they yeah. rehearse yeah. like they rehearse so fun, conversation like, yeah. beats of how how like they are gonna slowly, right. methodically, and yeah. rhetorically like and it's it's the strange family. too because this is a movie about people that are actively taking advantage of other people. Right. Like there's another there's a version of this story where they are are clearly the antagonist, mm -hmm. and like this is the way that they're behaving. And then on on screen in the movie, like I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. I'm like yeah. Go get them. Oh, you totally And, like, for them. because, you know, we see the situation that they're in, and mm -hmm. we see... What's, what's funny, too, is, like, I feel like, uh, you know, it's kind, of a, it's kind of a weird Rorschach test to see where you come down in real life. It's yeah. like there, there needs to be a question on any, like, on entrance exams to, like, you know, or, like, the test that you take to see if you're a, a psychopath, maybe. <laughs> There's a question that needs to be asked to be like, who do you think the antagonist of Parasite is? Oh. You know, and then, like, it'll, yeah. it'll, that'll come to, like, because there's a, a way to watch this movie that, you know, what's interesting is in the beginning of the movie, the Kims, they're portrayed as, like, they, they, they smile. They yeah. clearly love each other. Yeah. They're, like, getting by and they're doing their thing. And there's a, you know, what's presented is, is, the status quo that puts them in that position yeah. that they're having to scrape by and they're having to like con a local pizza place into a job folding pizza boxes, mm -hmm. right? They're like, like that, the scene, the, one of the scenes in the, towards the beginning where they're like surrounding the way it's shot. It's like this cool little wide angle lens yeah. with a really crowded frame. And this poor girl working in the pizza is like small in the frame and they're like closing in around her. And it's just like, Here's what you need. You need to hire some uh, part-time help, and you need to. Yeah. <laughs> they, and they've got her. They they have got her. The status quo that puts them in that position of that's how they have to get by. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like there's a version of watching this movie where you miss the fact that like that's the problem. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like. Yeah. Even like the opening scene, right? Like, talk about like the most like mundane of problems that is extremely relatable, which is like they someone changed the Wi-Fi password to the pat like to the Wi-Fi that they're stealing mm -hmm. and they're like they have to find the one corner of their house to just like get logged on yeah so yeah. they can get on their WhatsApp and get like whatever the world is like trying to communicate to them like, yeah, yeah. what well, to know, find out if they got a job yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, the mom is waiting on word back from 
somebody yeah. about yeah basic human necessity that yeah. I don't even have. And then you compare that to the and parks problems, yeah. and it's like, oh no, right. there's underwear in my car, oh. and like it's so silly. Underwear that was planted there. Yeah. To Again, so smart. Yeah. Like I would have never thought of that in a million yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. It does such a good job of painting the parks as like there's no reason they're in this spot over the Kims. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because like even like even Madame as nice and as she is, she has like no other redeeming qualities. Well, they go out of their way to portray the Kims as incredibly resourceful and incredibly yeah. talented and incredibly like charismatic people because mm -hmm. you know the parks believe everything i mean oh, yeah. yeah but then the parks are portrayed as being very useless yeah like yeah. the kids are not talented they need one of them one of them needs help in school and one of them has like some weird <laughs> psychotic need to to paint yeah like uh, madame is is i mean she can't even so like hilariously blissfully unaware yeah. she can't even like empty a dishwasher it's yeah. like <laughs> it's you know, amazing you know the best part about it is too which i think is going to be like one of the like weird touches that really ages well on that movie mm -hmm. um like when you go see like the dad in the in his like office mm -hmm. like he's like playing with a vr headset yeah yeah right it's just like oh, one of the questions like, like yeah. is it going to work with yeah. the phone yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah oh no it's not nah. gonna work with the phone and, and then that's the only yeah. that's that's his job yeah, yeah. Oh, his he, job yeah. is to just yeah. around with vr yeah. headsets yeah. it's just like the most it's just like the most useless contribution to society. <laughs> he's a he's a handsome executive it's who wears fancy suits and talks much. And, he, and he's 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 out there hawking a device to let you be un untethered it's, from actual. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling yeah. you, dude, it's one of the few things that's less useful to society than this podcast. There's <laughs> several people out yeah. there that think yeah. this is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the thing that the thing that I, I thought of actually was did you ever see Room 237? Mm-mm. It's a documentary. Uh, it's not even a documentary. It's it's a collection of theories about what The Shining means. Yeah, it's about oh. all the different meanings. Of People the have gone way down, way and too far down. There's a rabbit, rabbit hole. hole about every, and you know, there's the the moon landing thing of you know, oh my God, Kubrick faked the moon landing, and it's it's presented in such an interesting way that like mm -hmm. while you're watching it, you're like, oh Jesus Christ. But then as soon as the credits roll, we're like, that's all insane. Yeah, yeah. that's nuts. Yeah. But there's there's a way to do that with Parasite too because of like their obsession with Native American culture mm -hmm. in it. and then the fact that they moved into a house that people were already inhabiting that wasn't theirs and those people are having to hide out they're having to carve out a, a sort of a secret spot for themselves within this space and there's like all kind there's like colonialism kind of oh, yeah. issues that that if you pull on threads enough that this movie deals with a ton you could get law. You could teach a class on Parasite. Yeah. I really feel that way. Like you could t easily teach a whole class on Bong's work as a whole. But Parasite is so meaty. Like there's so yeah. much to dig into there. And like, yeah, you're right. Like the whole fascination with Native Americans. Like it's. It's so symbolic, to quote the movie. Or metaphorical. Mer metaphorical, so that's metaphorical. right. It's so metaphorical. I love, yeah, I love that. Uh, that's the one little bit of, of, you know, the way that he keeps using that word. That's the one <laughs> so little bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one thing where I'm like, oh no, man, you're doing, you're, you're getting this whole thing wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but for everything else, the Kim family is like they're on top of their shit. Yeah, but especially um, especially the daughter, like she just like, and they, they even said it, like they even say like, I really think it's interesting how um, the son at one point is like, you look like you belong here, like you're the yeah, only one yeah. who like looks like you belong, and of course she's the first to go. Well, yeah, she's the first to die. But she's the only there. Yeah, but she's also the, yeah. she's also yeah. the one that that sort of cracks the whip on her dad. When mm -hmm. he's worried about the driver, yeah. he starts thinking about the driver, and she's the one that's be like, "No, think about us." And oh, so for yeah. her brother to say, "Like, I think you belong here," that's when such she's a good presenting point. such a selfish kind of self-serving. Because yeah, she is the most selfish one, yeah. really. So she does. He's not wrong. Like, yeah. he does sort of belong there more than the others. But let's let, let's get into some art of the scene stuff mm -hmm. because we've been we've been dancing around some stuff a little bit out of context, mm -hmm. I think. But like, I think the conversation around this movie has to start with the turn. In the middle, yeah, of it, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of, uh, let's talk about. So, uh, for the art of the scene section, here's some brilliant moments. Let's talk about like the tricks that how they pulled this this thing off. Because in the middle of this movie, it becomes a different movie. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, it just like that's and that's why I love this movie so much. Because I went into it, 
pretty blind. Like, I went into it, you know, not having seen any trailers. I went to, like, a press screening before it was in theaters yet. So I had no idea. All I knew is that I liked Bong Joon-ho. And I knew nothing else. I was like, all right, long for the ride. And that, like, and they're, like, having this, like, great extravagant night in the house. And then it, yeah, yeah. it like, step by step all goes to shit. So this is, this is at a point in the movie where they've infiltrated, they fully infiltrated the park. Yeah, no, this is the, the, park the high point. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like this yeah, is yeah, absolutely. This is their yeah. win. Drunk. They're celebrating their yeah. win, yeah. right? They're getting drunk in the park's house. They've gotten rid of the driver. They've gotten rid of the housekeeper. And then all of a sudden, they the have housekeeper the house shows themselves. They have yeah. the house yeah. themselves. Mm -hmm. They're above ground. And then all of a sudden, the old housekeeper shows back up. And we find out that her husband is living in the basement in mm -hmm. a secret room, like a, a bomb, in a bomb shelter, shelter yeah. Yeah. in the basement. And it's, it becomes something else completely and mm -hmm. like on a dime. Yeah. And I, I think it's at where everyone kind of shows their butt a little bit. <laughs> like, I think of like, if like, you know, if Chung Sook just like was like, all right, like, I get it. We're, we're in this kind of together. I'll leave yeah. you, I'll leave him a little bit of food. But of course she like stands her ground and you can see, you could see like both sides to it too. And it would have worked if not like the whole thing comes crashing down because one of their feet slip and the Kims who are listening in on the conversation between Chung Sook and the <laughs> housekeeper and her husband, they all just come crashing down yeah. the stairs. And yeah. that's when the whole thing comes crashing right. down, really. Like even before that, they could still work around it, but then they get that video. Mm -hmm. The whole you holding this button, it's like a, it's like like the button to launch a missile. Yeah. Oh my well, god! And I mean, they're like in the, they're like in the corner with their hands up. Yeah. Like. And then like she's starting to do like the like the fake uh, North Korean like yeah. news yeah. like news broadcast. You're which so is good a, at it. Which is a completely <laughs> different side of that character too. Yeah. Like I mean that's how thoroughly this movie shifts gears is like this the housekeeper that we knew prior to mm -hmm. to all of this happening she was just this sweet woman mm -hmm. working in the house taking but then now she's like get your f***ing hands up like yeah. i'm doing like a, you know i'm on a i'm a north korean news anchor do like spouting some nonsense like it was it, it was so thoroughly different the second half of this of this movie so uh, which was which is really really pretty wonderful it's funny when you think about how much time the first half of the movie covers because i would think like they never actually specify but i would think that first half of the movie is like a few weeks at least yeah. like maybe a couple months but then the second half of the movie takes place over just between that night and the following afternoon and the way that you see like everything that they worked for in those first few months it just all falls apart like in really dramatic terrible ways well and and that what what i like about the the turn this mm -hmm. this sequence because it and this is a, a meaty chunk of it to your point like mm -hmm. that's a, that's a cuz i hadn't thought about that yeah. like the first the first half of the movie mm -hmm. is over the course of i mean at minimum a couple months at least couple right? months. well i mean at min like maybe it's 6 weeks yeah. but like yeah it's it's a long it's a good stretch of time mm -hmm. and then the rest of the movie is 16 hours? Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Until we get to the very end yeah. and then it, it, time jumps ahead a little bit. The way that that night is portrayed mm -hmm. is such, it's, it's almost a farce too. Mm -hmm. Like the amount of things that continue to go wrong, like it's, oh it's, my God. it's just, they stop short of somebody stepping in a bucket and falling on, you know, like yeah. that kind of thing. But honestly, not really because, yeah. <laughs> because like you said, it's just, a lot of this is just like, you know, there's physical comedy in yeah. it too. And my favorite part of that like especially how it all unravels is just how it all revolves around scent and it's oh, just like and so they, dehumanizing like, it's, it's so it's, demoralizing it's 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 so dehumanizing so demoralizing but it's also invisible yeah. which is just like like the n smartest undertone of like why they'll never like they'll always be poor because like the rich people will always be able to perceive that difference. Oh yeah, they'll always yeah. have that on yeah. them. And you can even see him like trying to like smell it on yeah, himself yeah. when they're he sitting under talking the table. About and the they, onion. Yeah. yeah. And, they, and like it happened like, you know, they just like foreshadow it so much in the movie, right? Like the little kid comes up and they're like, why do you smell they alike? They all smell the same. Oh yeah. my God. And then they're the like, do we, have to get, do we have to get like different like detergent and yeah. like different soaps and then like when they're in the like couch and the dad is just like yeah I can even smell them in like the back seat of the yeah. car yeah. and then like when they're driving what did he say about it smells like the subway people who yeah. ride the, the subway, subway have yeah. a certain yeah. smell that's exactly yeah. it she's like I haven't rode the subway in forever right yeah. so it's just like merely just riding the subway is like and and Ye then like gives you an a musk of yeah. lower class right. right sort of the coup de grace for this whole sequence to me is is this weird as hell sex scene yes! yeah that takes place on the couch and it is so hilariously perfect oh my God. like 
like it, it's all over the PJ's action. Yeah, it's like the most like. PG but like, the thing, sex in the so world. They, they they get through talking about this stuff about the scents and yeah. the onions and the low class and the people that ride the subway smell a certain mm-hmm. way, and then they start to fool around a little bit. Uh, and the things that they say to each other, like what I lost my shit the first time yeah. that I was watching it, and she's like, "Buy me drugs, yeah, buy, buy me, me drugs." drugs. <laughs> like that's one of my the favorite thing lines. That, yeah. I wrote that down as one of my favorite lines. That's your dirty talk. Is buy me drugs, <laughs> which is so funny. It's so like, so there's in a, there is an erotic thrill for these people mm-hmm. at like pretending because he asks her like. You know, the underwear you found in my car. Do you still have it? Will you wear it? And and stuff like that. And, like, there is a giddy erotic thrill for them pretending to be because that's low class. because just like that like them being in the, like the kims being in this house is their fantasy yeah like they have, what else do they have to fantasize about right that scene is so good and i could go step by step about how stressful that scene gets with every single thing that do goes it. wrong we've got yeah. time yeah we've got time <laughs> yeah. no, no like because I, honestly like this this turning point in the movie is yeah. one of the like you know because I mean, we've talked about other movies that have dealt with class struggle mm-hmm. and dealt with wealth disparity in, in differing ways and the eat the rich movies that, mm-hmm. that some work some don't like this one clearly works but i think it, it this this turning point is one of the most brilliant yeah. things yeah. about the entire movie. And by the way, for as much as we've talked about this turning point, we also we still been talked about what I think is one of the most stressful things about it, which is the Ramdan. Yes. When it's oh, like yeah. we have to get these two people, we have to like strong arm them into a basement. We have to do something with them. We have to clean up the mess well, we made. Let's, let's start with that. So yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. they're they're drunk as hell. Yeah. yeah. To start with. Yeah. yeah. Like they're sitting in the living room. That's the other thing. They're drunk while they're, they're doing they're this. They're drunk as hell. Yeah. They've been drinking and they've been sort of sniping at each other too. Because yeah. this is the scene where or the, the dad is talking about like, well, you think that driver has another job by now? And mm-hmm. she's like, shut up. No, don't worry about him. Worry about yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. There's that bit of, there's also the, the weird turn where the mom is, is sort of like calling the dad pathetic. Yeah. And they do like a, a quick little play act of like, mm-hmm. he's about to hit her. Or something, and he like shatters some stuff, and everyone's yeah. like, "What the hell's that?" And he's like, ah, "I got you." Yeah. And so there's all of these little moments, like that is in itself is is such a great little, like some something is coming, mm-hmm. like and here's a fake out, but like some there's there is a turning point on the near horizon. And the second that bell dings, oh, it's man. like it's like you're right because there's been so much tension building, and it's like there's no like we're only like you know halfway through the movie, well, like there's there, no way they won. There yeah. is. I see. That's that's actually the the uh, thing that I might disagree with. It's like I don't think there's been a single bit of tension built the entire movie. Yeah. Like they've been getting away with it so easily, and so and they're so immediately ensconced in the Park family's life. Yeah. And it worked. It mm-hmm. all worked. It worked like that. Like there wasn't even a like. It wasn't even hard. It wasn't difficult. Yeah. They just did it to then ramp up the tension so immediately. Yeah. With I mean it's it's, it's things like like it starts raining. Yeah. Like it's dark. Oh, and then it's the rain, fucking rain. It's light, and then they lose their entire life, and then yeah. they lose everything yeah. immediately. Like the way that the the way that this movie shifts gears is, is I mean, it's all those little things like that. Like it's mm-hmm. it's writing that scene where, you know, they pretend to have a you know domestic incident <laughs> in yeah. front of their children. Yeah, but it's um, also where one of my favorite lines comes comes in. Not to jump ahead too no, much, but th- we're like they're talking about Madame, and they're like, oh, she's nice though. She's nice. And uh, Chung Suk is just like, she's not, like, what's, what's the line? It's, she's not nice but rich. She's, like, nice because she's rich, right, basically. Yeah. She's not nice, you know. She's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you not know costing what I'm her anything. The money yeah, makes yeah. her nice. Then, yeah, something. she doesn't There's have anything else to worry about, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you get hardened because you have so much to worry about. And I love, like, it, it's because it's so true. And then you immediately go from that to them scrambling because they're not rich. Yeah. They're poor. And they have a lot to worry about. So the next thing that happens, the old housekeeper shows up. Yeah. yeah. Like in the rain, soaking wet. Like she forgot least, something. She I left something in the basement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like, and even the way that we see her is so warped and weird because we see her like on the. the and she's the, unrecognizable because we've only seen her. She's in, like, got a hood yeah. and glasses and she's wet and she's like looking yeah. like this and like no, it's, and it's, it's like this weird monster coming out of the rain. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But it's like, and when you really think about all the people that they screwed over in order to get to where they are, I mean, what they did to the like the housekeeper was kind of like the point of really no return. Mm-hmm. The driver actually probably will find another job. Right. But like that housekeeper has been there for longer than the parks two, have been. Two families. Yeah. Two families. Yeah. And so, like, that was, like, that's when you're watching it and you're almost kind of like, oh, I don't know if I'm with them on this one. Yeah. So it's, like, it, it is kind of karma, but at the same time, you know why they did what they did. And right. that's why it's so hard to, like, yeah, identify an antagonist here. They decide to let her in and see if they can, 
go get your thing and then maybe she'll leave and it turns out the thing that she left in the bay I, that, that's another great <laughs> great reveal like God. the the slow playing of this reveal too is when because she just walks in hustles straight down the stairs right. and they don't immediately go after her mm -hmm. yeah they just like, let her do her thing yeah. they just they let her do her thing and then it's been a while yeah and I then also she think goes it's the booze a little bit like they're all like yeah they're drunk because they're like, all drunk yeah yeah <laughs> But then they go downstairs. When we do go downstairs and see what she's up to, she's wedged herself between the wall yeah. and, she's and, and the furniture. <laughs> it's so fun. It's it, so surreal. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's, this is when it starts, like, the, when the wheels come off yeah. in this movie, like, they f***ing come off. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh! By the way, when she does like fall and smacks her face yes. against, I'm yeah. like, oh my god, that must have hurt so bad. But she just gets up and scrambles yep. to the basement. Yeah, she's she's a weird, unstoppable monster at yeah. this point. Yeah, yeah. And, and Chuck Sook does help her. Like you can tell, like she feels kind of bad at yeah. first, but the second that it's like, oh yeah, so going through the scene more, then they go down to the basement yeah. and the rest of the Kims are still hiding in the yeah. stairwell because, of course, the former house doesn't know that they're. And that whole scene is just surreal too, right? Because yeah. it's just like. She gives the she gives her husband that bottle and like the banana, so it's like yeah. oh good, oh, kind of yeah, like, like okay, uh, yeah, like, so yeah. when yeah, by the time we they get back down to the basement, reveal that her husband's down there, like, but he's like a child, he, yeah, yeah, and yeah. the way he eats that banana, yeah, and yeah. the way they photograph him eating that banana mm -hmm. is like. I, I'm not entirely sure how to describe it, but it looks like Chat GPT would probably describe somebody eating a banana that way. Like yeah. you, could, you could like you could there's you know art generators or something that you could be like guy eats a banana weird and yeah. it might look like this because it it just doesn't look natural mm -hmm. like, and I don't I've never seen anybody eat a banana that way. You go into a whole another world yeah. when you go into that basement. Like yeah. it is like you have like the peak of like extravagance in the above ground yeah. house, and then you go down. To the bomb shelter, and this it's is you know twenty five percent of our of our uh, discussion so far uh, and the, sh the entire show have dealt with staircases. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. we talked about it with Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. Uh, here we are with staircases again, and and you know there are uh, some quotes from Bong Joon Ho talking about how it's kind of an upstairs downstairs. Uh, it's very literal. Drama. Yeah. yeah, it's very literal. I mean, that mm -hmm. referring to the type of story of just like you know servants and mm -hmm. you know. Uh, masters or whatever they literally cover like the intro to the sun in the exact same way they did it in sunset boulevard like when we talked about how sunset boulevard was like textbook it's like yeah. her standing at the top of the stairs just like looking down and the kids like oh you're here like for like to interview for like the tutoring thing and then yeah. like yeah they come upstairs and then she's like thank you so much like goodbye and then when when she stops them at the top of the stairs she's like like about the art like about the art teacher and then she goes down to his level yeah. to yeah. like talk to him about like the sister becoming the art teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Like when when she needs something from them. Yeah. She goes come down, down the, the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a it's a brilliant bit of blocking. It's it's interesting because there's a staircase down to the basement. Mm -hmm. There's a staircase down to the garage where the driver where, you know the basement where the the housekeeper works. Mm -hmm. Another staircase down to the garage where the driver's sort mm -hmm. of yeah. deal is. But like I um, said earlier too, that staircase makes. Like, it, it makes the big turning point in that movie because, like I said, they probably would have gotten away with it if it weren't for them falling down the staircase. Yeah. They and it's almost like this metaphorical, like, no, you belong yeah. down here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, whether you're going to, you're trying to stay out yeah. of this spot, but this is where you belong. Yeah. The universe chucks them down there. Yeah. And it's the same thing, too. <laughs> like, I mean, in, in talking about how the, the housekeeper and what they do to her is sort of. That was kind of the last straw. It's like, oh, you guys, you guys might have gone too far. Yeah. And then here at the end of this sequence, so then the other thing that happens in this sequence to add the, the next layer of stress mm -hmm. to this turning point is it's been raining. The fan, the parks were out mm -hmm. on a camping trip for the kid's mm -hmm. birthday, but it floods and they have to come back. Well, mm -hmm. and they're just like, could you make us some food? We'll be there in the eight minutes. It's so the, the, the other fun thing. Oops, sorry, gone. No, 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 no. But then, like, there's a scramble to clean up a little bit, mm -hmm. to hide their tracks, to cover their tracks, and then to make food that she'd never she heard of before. She hasn't even heard of it before. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, and then to, to pull it off or whatever. But then the, the, the thing, the punctuation to that is she literally kicks the housekeeper back down the stairs. And just And just flopping yeah. down the stairs and... But what I wanted to bring up, it's like interesting why they even went on the camping trip in the first place. Because do you remember when she was like, yeah, he saw a ghost? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's and all it's because of the husband, husband down yeah. in, the, yeah. in the basement. Yeah. 
Which, by the way, not to jump ahead too much, but that shot of him like coming up from the basement and just yeah. was like, oh, the eyes one that made really the kid, that, yeah, yeah that like traumatized yeah, the yeah. kid, yeah, terrifying, so terrifying. Yeah. And the idea that of interacting with poor people yeah. made the kid pass out and have a seizure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like Jeez, I didn't even think about that for at. as much as I've thought about this yeah. movie. I didn't but even that's, think about that. That's, yeah. that's again, if you make a movie this skillfully, where there are clearly layers on layers on layers, yeah. like you don't even recognize it. I mean, it, it's a weirdly specific, but also kind of blank canvas. Like yeah. you can project so much onto this movie of yourself and however you come at it. But also, there's some really specific things going on. Yeah. yeah. No, but like even to just go back again to that that scene where she's making the Ramdan, it's like the fact that they still pull it off though, like they still yeah. manage to clean up their mess, get oh, those two down in the basement. I mean, up yet killing one of them, but like you know, yeah, like and still make the <laughs> still make the noodles. Which the kid didn't eat. Which the kid didn't, the kid even, didn't eat. even eat. Yeah, it was the mom. Right. The mom yeah. ate it. And then they there's there's bickering like as yeah. yeah. They're sneaking out of the house. Like there's bickering among the families. Like why didn't you give me some? Of and the that's, noodles? Their problems, and like, the that's, that's their problems, by the way. That's their problems. <laughs> The rest of the movie, all but the last, what, five or six minutes, I guess, mm -hmm. um, take place over the next day, the next morning and afternoon. Yeah. 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 And it's, and they never get a rest. So they go yeah. all the way home, yeah. it, walking in the rain. They're already exhausted. They're already drunk. Yeah. Their, yeah. their like, house is just flooded. And they, yeah. And they, and they're like covered in sewage water. Like they haven't had a sleep. They haven't had a shot. Like, yeah. well, they did bathe in the house, but like. And they, like, end up in this gym, and I can't imagine, like, they must have had maybe, like, an hour or so of rest before they jump into, oh, my God, we have to plan a freaking birthday party yeah. for this, yeah. like, little ungrateful kid. And the ungrateful family. Yeah. Yeah. It, two other things that, that really strike me about this post-turn uh, sequence here. It, like, number one, when they're back and their house is flooding, uh, they're trying to salvage some stuff, and there's this image of... Uh, Ki Jung sitting on the toilet as shit is literally shooting yeah. up out and of it. And she tries to light yeah. the cigarette. And she's trying to light a cigarette while she's sitting on the lid of a toilet that's trying to explode. Yeah. yeah. And it's like that image is funny and it's tragic and it's it's loaded with all kinds of symbolism. Yeah. Uh, pretty on the nose <laughs> symbolism, <Yeah>. frankly. <laughs> um, but it's it, there was just, it's just one of those moments where you know they were just drinking expensive booze mm -hmm. in a really nice house mm -hmm. like two hours ago. Yeah. Yeah. And then now you're you're literally like your toilet is exploding and you can't get a, you can't light a cigarette. You know what? I'm also <laughs> wondering like Chung Suk, the mother, she doesn't even know what's happening to her house. No, no. So like you have the entire rest of the family seeing that their entire livelihood is like gone. Like what are they gonna do after this? Yeah. And she doesn't even know. She <laughs> She's just know like yet. doting mm -hmm. on this rich family. My reaction to that was it felt like she was in prison. Like that felt mm -hmm. like a, a whole other tragedy yeah. that she was stuck yeah. away from the family yeah um you know she wanted to be with the family like even yeah. though that yeah. obviously it wasn't a great situation she would rather be with her own oh, family yeah, yeah. But, but the fact that she wasn't able to get out of the house mm -hmm. was not like they don't show her not leaving mm -hmm. like they don't show her like watching them go and you know there's <laughs> yeah. none of that yeah but you just know that she didn't get out of the house and right. it feels like she's in danger and it feels like she's well because she's still in this house with these with this guy yeah. who's yeah. in the basement yeah, yeah i just feel so bad for mr kim because when you think about when they're sitting under the we talked about when they're laying under the table and that whole sex scene like and they're sitting here openly talking like just terribly about about him and he has to sit there with his family mm -hmm. and like just be just take it yeah, he just has to sit there and take it. And it's like just another like kick in the face for yeah. this guy. He can't even protect his family. Like you have to imagine how bad that feels. Their house is literally washing away. Yeah, and he's like, what can I do for my kids? And then he has that great line where he's like, you know what the best plan is? No plan, because I don't know what to do at this point. Yeah. <laughs> like that's basically what you, that you means. You think all these people planned on spending the night in a yeah, gym? Like, yeah, yeah. Going back earlier to what we said about like you know uh, Ki Jung being kind of like the most selfish one, the son is still trying to help. Like he's still trying to like take his yeah. father's burdens a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I still feel like no one's in a worse position than Mr. Kim in that in that scene. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's literally how it ends up. Too. Yeah. yeah. Like you know the. So, I mean, what Snacks. are you guys... So, at some point, he says that he, he's he got his own plan. He tells the kids, like, I've got my own plan. I don't believe that Don't worry true. about this. Yeah. You don't... You, so, you don't think... I don't think he ever had a plan. I don't think, like, the rain washed away his plan. Okay. Yeah. There's Because there's part of me that... And maybe it, it's a second viewing kind of kind mm -hmm. of thing. But there's part of me that read that as, like, oh, he's going to kill him. You thought he's he, gonna that kill was him. the plan the entire time. I think there's a chance. 
But I, you know, I putting putting the their entire house washing away in between. Yeah. I've got a plan, and the actual, you know, the the end scene. I don't know if that's true, but there's part of me that that thinks like, yeah, maybe he was like, you know what, I've had enough. I'm gonna kill them all. <laughs> I mean, that is the cleanest like solution at that point. Yeah. Like, what else yeah. do you do? Like, you have these people who are going to end your life if like or ruin your life if they can get out of that basement. Right. And I mean, they do. <laughs> So the second thing, there's, there's a, I think, a, a legitimately really great shot of Mr. Kim driving mm. with Madame in the back seat. Even before she starts to smell, her bare feet are on the back yeah. of the headrest in front of her. Uh, and it's things like that, that it's it, that little detail is just like she's got her bare feet up there and she's talking about what a blessing that rain was. Yeah. You know, the yeah. sky's blue today because it rained so much. And the rain night. just ruined their entire <laughs> lives. Exactly. <laughs> it's, so like the, that conversation, she's on the phone pretending he's not even there until she realizes it, until she smells him or whatever. And she's got her feet, you know, right by his head. Like that was the, the first moment where I was like, oh, it, you know, Mrs. Park kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like she she skated on being kind of dumb and naive and innocent and all that for the whole movie. But then mm -hmm. when she's in that moment, mm -hmm. I was like, nope, she sucks. And she also, gets no sympathy from me. The fact that she knows that like, she can just call like the Kims are at her beck and call. Like this is yep. an impromptu. Yeah. So like we'll just pay him overtime. We'll just pay him overtime. Yeah. Like it's just so presumptuous. Right. And she just doesn't, like, you can tell, like, she's nice because, like, you know, what else would she be? But she's not thinking about these people as no, people. No, no, not even a little bit. Yeah. Any other brilliant moments we need to talk about before we move on? I mean, we could talk about the, the ending. End. Yeah, yeah, the ending I think you have to talk about. Right. I mean, this whole thing where they kind of, like, build up this fantasy scenario where it seemed like maybe he can go to school and get rich enough to buy well, his I, house. I was talking about the, the, oh. Oh, the no, party. Oh, no, of course. The yeah, birthday the party's party scene. huge. Yeah. Madame describing the arrangement of the tables. Yeah. As in like reference to an old Japanese or Korean uh, military maneuver yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like that's. Um, I also like when she's setting up the tables. He's like, "You be quiet." Yeah. The, yeah, kid, the yeah. kids part. The she's kids like part. struggling to set up tables yeah. at a kids party, and, and he's the kid's still asleep in the tent back yeah. there. He's like, yeah. Could you just keep it down? Keep it down. He's sleeping. Um, <laughs> but at the party, when the housekeeper's husband from downstairs gets loose you know for for Ki Woo or Mr. Kevin the yeah <laughs> the tutor yeah you know he's carrying this scholar's rock mm -hmm. the, the, this is the thing that like the scholar's rock kind of starts the whole thing for them mm -hmm. like it was a, it was you know Ki Woo's friend that gifted it to them and mm -hmm. it's supposed to bring you know wealth and prosperity he came to the from house a college kid that cool college right right, yeah. right that cool he college was a cool college kid. he was cool he, he did he yeah. did almost beat up that guy peeing in their window he, he was did. really cool is he taking that rock down to gift it to this family that they've trapped down in the basement? I thought, I was thinking he was actually going to kill him. You think he was going I to think just that was brain them with the rock? Yeah, because I think at that point, he knew that his father had no plan. Yeah. Like he was like, all right, it's now time for me to take charge. Like, I'm the man of the house now. Yeah. And I think he was just going to solve the problem. Yeah. And then, of course, he drops yeah. the rock down the stairs. Yeah. yeah. Another staircase. Again, the staircase keeps yeah. screwing them over, which is <laughs> so metaphorical. But like it is, like that. It's like it's a it staircase keeps, that they have no control over. Yeah, and it just keeps pushing They're, them down. This family has zero agency when it comes to existing on this staircase. Yeah, like everything just falls to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, must be slippery to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. But, yeah, he has this whole fantasy where he's gonna marry into this family. Right. And even like again oh. to go back to that scene where they're all sitting around drunk, he's like, well, we can hire actors at our wedding yeah. to play my parents. Like that is so far back. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. He's pot committed to this thing. Yeah. At that point. So was the other kid. The kid that got them the job was just like, hey, don't don't hit on her while I'm away. Yeah. Like, yeah. I I get yeah. one of my college buddies, Plus but they're, they're all they're all a bunch of frat boys. Yeah. yeah. A um, bunch of bros. A bunch of bros gonna <laughs> steal my my 15 year old girlfriend. Yeah, yeah she's really <laughs> yeah. young. She's very, very yeah. young. So by the time this husband, he has lost it completely. Mm -hmm. Like he seemed like he was he was a little worse for wear when when he first comes up and yeah. he's like, you know, the housekeeper is is giving him a, a massage on the couch and they're holding the the you know the Kim's hostage mm -hmm. and all that. He he seems a little a little batty, mm -hmm. yeah. but not irretrievably. Yeah. You know. And so for whatever happened over the rest of that night, like, he lost it. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. But he is... Well, I mean, he was trapped down there with his dead wife. And that's, like, his yeah. one last thread to, like, you know, sanity. Like, he loves his wife. Yeah. yeah. And once he loses that, like, what's the point, you know? And also the idea that he's the one that's been turning on the lights. Yeah. As, yeah. Like, for the fact that... So, <laughs> the staircase... Mm-hmm. You know, as somebody's walking into the home, yeah. in the main staircase from from the outside, lights turn on as you walk underneath them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as it turns out, this guy has been living in the basement, turning on the lights as people walk up the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. And the like, what what is that even a metaphor for? Like, what is what are we? <laughs> <laughs> this it's, this is another part of this movie where it's like that's such a crazy image. Yeah. Like the guy, he's got his. He's obviously I, he didn't do it with his forehead forever. Yeah. But he was he was bound by this point. His hands were bound, and so he was just banging his forehead into the light switches in the basement mm-hmm. as Mr. Park walked up the steps. Yeah. And Mr. Park's just walking up the steps, and the lights turn on, yeah. and he walks up, and well, it's I a thing that he takes totally for granted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think that's what it is. I, I don't know if it's a metaphor. It might be. But I think it is just another sign of how completely oblivious the Parks are. Like, And I think, like, Madame makes it some comment at some point. It's like, oh, that light's going bad at you. But yeah. it's like, really? Yeah. Like, you the don't notice... going uh, crazy. Yeah, you don't notice every sign yeah. that is blinking when you walk up the stairs. And like, he's Morse coding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, he's Morse coding. Is, so for him to be pounding his head on that, and he, he it does it so much that his, his whole face is a wreck yeah, and then he just runs wreck. out looking to stab people and nobody notices him by the way again oblivious mm-hmm. like they're just like he having their little show and nobody notices him until he literally pushes people out of the way so that he can stab, stab somebody yeah. yeah yeah so that he can and of course it's not one of the parks he stabs it's you know the ultimately it's the daughter right. yeah it's yeah. the daughter that's yeah. the prize the fact that you know mr kim is being forced to wear like a plastic oh, yeah. headdress and before, and that, before yeah. there's a conversation where mm-hmm. that he's having with Mr. Park mm-hmm. about, you know, I'm paying you. Yeah. I'm paying you. Oh, my, and that justifies so just, everything. So and shut there, up there's and a, play There's along. a moment just, where Mr. Where think of this as part of the job. Yeah. yeah. There's a moment where Kim is actually trying to connect yeah. with yeah. Mr. Park about this. He's like, well, I mean, obviously you love your family and you're yeah. trying your best yeah. to take yeah. care of your family. Yeah. And Mr. Park is like, I'm paying you to be here. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> like, He's so obsessed shut with, it like, down. yeah, crossing <laughs> you know? the line. Yeah, like, yeah, you're yeah. not allowed to connect with me as a human because to right. me, you're not a human. Exactly. And if I connect with you, that's, some, that's saying me, something about me. You're a guy that smells like the subway. Right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you can, like, yeah, you're right. He's trying to connect with him, like, father to father. Yeah. And, like, yeah. Mr. Park hates him for it. Yeah. He's yeah. like, we are not the same, my I guy. I am paying you. Yeah. So for, for, for Mr. Kim to then kill Mr. Park. Like, I mean, that, that was building. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but it, it feels... I don't know. Felt right. Oh no, it did. Right? I I was like excited. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't want to play, but like, and, like yeah. the, the last straw being him like rolling a dead body, like holding his nose, so he mm-hmm. rolls a dead yeah. body out of the, the guy that had been living yeah. in his basement, basement. Yeah. for years. Who, by the way, respected the hell out of him. Yeah. It, like is stabbed with a giant meat skewer. In dying, yeah. um, he yells respect. He yells respect, yeah. and then he, like holds his nose, moves him out of the way so he can get the keys to and get out of And by the there. way, the fact that he's so up his own butt that he holds his nose when his own son is like 15 minutes from dying and you can't like, you still have to hold your little nose. Yeah. You're not so stressed about your stu- son potentially yeah. dying. <laughs> like it's so terrible. Can we also, the, the other part of this scene that I, I just desperately love, it's mm-hmm. just a fun... It's a perfect little detail. Is when we're when we flash back to it later mm-hmm. to show because ultimately Mr. Kim escapes into the base. So now yeah. he's in this like weird subclass hell mm-hmm. uh, that he's trapped in the basement now too. But when we flash back to see how that all worked out, one of the little dogs is eating the that meat that's on the on skewer the that had yeah. been stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> that stabbed the guy with. <laughs> it's it's just one of it's that those details and I'm like, "Yep. Yeah. Like this is how this is how you satire." Mm-hmm. Well, that's cuz like that again, that's why I love Bong. Like everything he does is just so intentional. Yeah. Like not one single thing in that movie is an accident. Right. I mean, so I mean, we ended up just talking about the entire back half of that. Yes. Movie, but like the the brilliant the the brilliance of that turn, and then becoming yeah. something else entirely is unbelievable. Is so good. Yeah, and it's like, and I also still love the first half. It moves so quickly, and it's like this great kind of like little like dark comedy. Well, the fir- yeah, the first half is hilarious. Yeah, no, yeah. the first half is like Ocean's Eleven. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, like it has like the real Ocean's Eleven vibe. It's just like, yeah. all right, like how are we gonna like? Yeah. Here's the mark. Even a little how, bit of nonlinear stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like, like here's intercutting the, mark. the yeah. prep with the yeah. execution. Yeah. yeah exactly. And the reason that's so smart is because by the time you get to this turn, you're totally on this family side, even yeah. though they just totally screwed over this like pretty like innocent housekeeper. I mean. No one's really innocent in this movie, but like, you know, like even by that point, you're <laughs> as far as we know at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like by you, by the time you get to the turn, you you um, just really like this family so much, yeah. which makes yeah. what happens next so heartbreaking. Right. So he's, he's he discovers that his yeah. father is Morse coding a letter yeah. out to him, writes a letter back promising to make enough money to buy the house so that he can come out of there. Mm. Yeah. Do we think he's do you think he's got a shot? No. The tar ending. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's yeah. like you know, you can, yeah, you can. Well, I guess rever- I guess reverse tar. It's a reverse <laughs> tar. Yeah, it's a pretty standard reverse tar. Ta- reverse oh tar God. from four years prior <laughs> to tar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, I don't. I don't think there is, and that's like the great tragedy. But he's never going to yeah. stop striving for it. You know. Yeah, it's that. It's that tragic you know bootstraps nonsense yeah just like no you can do it anybody can do it yeah it's like, well, like, no if actually keep, he can't <laughs> if you keep making those stairs so goddamn slippery yeah then no, no yeah. he's never going to be able to god and just like i feel so bad for like the mother too like she's now lost like basically lost her husband yeah lost her daughter yeah. i mean her son is not the same person that yeah. he was before it's like and now she's like has to like pick up the pieces like yeah. i feel so ba- like yeah so bad for where she is yeah that is a gorgeous scene yeah like with the way that the sun's coming through the window and they they mentioned the sun coming through the windows like everybody that's lived in that house mm-hmm. mentions that window that yeah. picture window right mm-hmm. the the way that this house is a house that was built by a famous architect yeah like in story that's that's what it is and and so and i, I was reading some stuff about production designers saying things yeah. like i'm not an architect like yeah. I'm a production designer. I make spaces so that cameras can move around and yeah. people can be blocked. But that giant window was such a focal point yeah. of the design, of the architecture, of, of everything. Like it was an in-character thing where, but the idea that people keep coming back to like the sun, like mm-hmm. when the sunlight lands in the yard and through the windows, it's such an amazing space. And so for that last scene, that fantasy of him rescuing his father, yeah. For it to be, and the, the, I think that the light has a little bit of a different texture in that too. It's much warmer mm-hmm. all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's, it was just a beautifully shot piece of film. I totally believe that too when he says, like, I'm a production designer, not an architect, because, like, I don't think that would be a very, like, it's a little coldly designed, that house. I don't know it's if pre- I. It's pretty Spartan <laughs> yeah. in space, yeah. yeah but, it, it, but very perfectly, like, Oh, yeah. Rich and not much taste. Like yeah, that's all. Oh, yeah, exactly. like, there's it avoid, no character. It avoids, like, yeah, there's yeah. no personality to it. Yeah. yeah. Except for that one wall that has like their wedding portrait, the family portrait, and then like the one drawing of the kid. <laughs> and the, the insanity scroll. Which, by the yeah. kid. <laughs> one of the funniest moments in that movie is her convincing Madame the, yeah. um, that her son is like off his rocker mm-hmm, and like mm-hmm. just like like going through this like fake like art therapy yeah, like yeah. crap that she made up you see up how on. the bottom right hand corner is, yeah. all, is all dark yeah and later like, she's like oh I just googled crazy. art therapy oh. and like improv the rest like that's so yeah. cheap yeah. <laughs> it's so funny there's there's a great line in the movie too where uh, it was it's when she when Madame is calling the number to get a to get the housekeeper mm-hmm. you know, it's like the fake housekeeper service yeah. or whatever mm-hmm. the, um, and you know the daughter's sitting there. Sorry, and they, <laughs> she walks past her parents, and they both they're sitting there, and, and I think it's the dad that says like she could be a great con artist if she wanted to. And it's like she is. What do you think you're <laughs> doing? <laughs> like the the fact that it's it, you know that it doesn't feel like like a con yeah. to them, it, like and and tipping their hand in that in that way. It's like this is not a con. This is just how we get by. Yeah. Like that's that's a that was a pretty telling line, which I thought was sneaky kind of smart. Yeah. I mean, but it's kind of how they have to. They yep. tried folding pizza boxes. Absolutely. And, yeah. 안녕하세요. 더케어 시니어 어드바이저 여명선입니다. 네, 네. 거기가 더케어 본사 맞죠? 네, 네. 전현 작어 사기를 쳤어도 대사관련인데 전현이. 보이스 돈참 좋지. 나 닮았어. Let's talk about lists. Yeah. Yeah. Section of the show where we're going to we're going to put this on some some movie lists. Top 10s that it's actually showed on. It's only a couple years old so we haven't used it much, but it was on our best of 2019. Yeah, thank mm-hmm. God. Yeah, um, that would have been embarrassing. Would have been an, an oversight, I think. <laughs> was it on your best of 2019 or 2020? It was on our best of 2019 that we put out in 2020. <laughs> I, I bet we, I bet we we beat the uh, we beat the Oscars to it, but yeah. um, mm-hmm. it, it was. It, 
you know, January 2020, best of 2019. That's mm -hmm. how things work. And I think I got to mention on our uh, recent screenplays episode as well. Oh, yeah? Uh, but not, but not, sunset, a, not, a, not, not a Sunset Belt Boulevard. That's no, not nope, <laughs> neither one. far from recent. But, <laughs> neither one. Um... I but mean, I, I do think screenplay. I do think that there is uh, it, it's a fairly like I say it's a fairly recent one that we haven't yeah. haven't had much of a chance to include on some of the top list, ten but what, families, top ten families. There's and they really it do might love have each been. other. We did that I one. That it might have shown up. I need to go back and revisit that. I can't remember if I mentioned that or not. I love the Kims. Yeah. It's you know, yeah. as shady as they are sometimes. Top ten families. One of these days we'll revisit our top ten families list. Yeah. Make sure they're on. Also, there. do we have? I I don't. Do we have like a most stressful films list? Because this is very stressful. No. This is yeah. like uncut gems level stressful. Mm, that, yes, that would be. How do we make that list not stressful for people to watch? I mean, that's I, the point. <laughs> <laughs> we we did uh, we did thrillers at one point. Um, I don't know if this is. A I thriller, don't think it counts as a it's thriller. It's one of though. the ten genres this movie falls into. Black right. comedies. Yeah. yeah, dark comedies. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's there's a thing where like top ten movies that become a different movie halfway through. Would this be a? Ooh. Yeah. I mean, there's like like Psycho. Twist yeah, one. Twists cool. would be a good one. Twists in the middle yeah. of the yeah. movie. Like, twists are, are generally reserved to, to be for the end. end. Yeah. Well, even yeah. the first one, I th like, Psycho has a twist at the end also. Yeah. yeah. Like, it becomes a different movie as soon as Marion Crane gets it, but then also the twist at the end that he's actually his own mother. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this one, it, it, follows a similar, it follows a similar path here. Yeah, what? movies that could be really easily spoiled by a trailer, basically. Yeah. So is this a con man movie? Do we consider this? Despite the fact hmm. that they don't see themselves as con men... Uh, that you know, I could see that being a subcategory of yeah. a con man movie because yeah. they definitely like a you know, sub sub genre. I mean, they 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 are trading in confidence, right? Like, yeah, these people have the the family has the confidence that they're who they say they are, despite the fact of not being that. Right. Despite the fact that, like, I mean, they basically just con their way into a job. Is that is that the, <laughs> yeah. the legalese of <laughs> like the lawyer speak for what defines <laughs> a confidence, con man? man? Yeah. 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 I mean, we talked a little bit about some of the best lines. Like, what are what are some of the top top lines? Oh in this wait, movie? no, I have one that we haven't mentioned yet. I I feel like I just love the delivery. Dude, it's, it's he smells like someone who rides on the subway. It's just like yeah. the most like, oh, cutting line. Don't call me sis, you filthy bitch. Oh. <laughs> Such a good line. <laughs> and, I like, love that, and, and I also didn't notice after that. I noticed that Madame was calling her sis. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't real I didn't notice if she was doing that prior to yeah. it. It's just like the two of them trying to connect and it's like we're, you know. And they're never going to because they're right. working against each other, but they have like Right. Yeah. And like again, it's it's a system that pits poor people against each other to fight for whatever table scraps yeah. the parks happen to drop down the stairs. Yeah. Another one I wrote down. It's when um he's trying to get that job initially of tutoring the daughter and there he's like taking or she's taking that test exam and she's like skipping questions and he's like and he grabs her wrist and he's like your pulse is racing <laughs> yeah. the heart doesn't lie and exam is like slashing through a jungle it's so dramatic yeah. but of course they buy right into it because they're not very smart right the parks. right right these 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 helpless idiots that yeah are super rich yeah. yeah it's yeah. such a good moment but it's also like like basically where you can tell he like she like falls in love with kiwu like yeah that's yeah. the moment I do think I we did a best twists list a long time ago, but pre twenty nineteen yeah pre twenty nineteen I think th I think this would deserve a spot because uh, frankly like most twists come at the end yeah, and yeah. this one comes right in the yeah. middle yeah this is and not it's a it's, it's a very Kevin consequential as Kaiser yeah. Yeah. right 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 this Spoiler. isn't this isn't an M Night twist yeah yeah <laughs> they're in the present. I would uh, an I really interesting list though would be movies that turn into another movie halfway yeah. through. Yeah, I mean, like what are, there's um, like Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. 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 Like mm -hmm. there's ba there's training and then there's, there's war. war. Yeah. Like there's, that's very very cut and dry. There are two different reasons to have these two different movies. Mm. Shining's kind of like that, you know. Shining's a little yeah. bit like that. Well, like mm -hmm. it's a ghost story, and then he has to, you know, murder his whole family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he gets a different mission <laughs> yeah. at the midpoint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. So. Th First half of the movie is him trying to keep care of this hotel, and the second half of it is him. Yep. Barbarian did it yeah. just oh, last year. Oh, Barbarian's a great uh, example. That was literally two different movies. Yeah. That, like, that was a movie in its sequel, Yeah. Like, yeah. is what it felt like. Yeah. Um, Still never get over the, the measuring of the, of the, the basement. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, Justin yeah. Long measuring, yeah. like, oh, how much can I charge yeah. for... <laughs> how much extra, how how much much extra, extra square, square footage yeah. is yeah. this? And he's, he's measuring, like, past the weird, like, assault bed. It's like the um, longest tape measure ever. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> um, I imagine it would fit in the same category of Full Metal Jacket for some reason, but um, uh, One Cut of the Dead. Yeah. Mm. There's a reset yeah. in the middle. That's the same movie twice, yep. actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But let's do, uh, let's move on to things you didn't know. 
Mm-hmm. Did you is guys there? dig it? Huh? Is there a lot of Are books? there any things you didn't know here? I mean, this is, you know, the I mean, I feel like this... I did not know that they only built one story in this house. That's yeah. that was the one thing that I wanted to talk about. Is yeah. so the the house, um, it feels like a location, mm-hmm. but it's very much not. They built it uh, from what I can t- gather. They built it on a couple of different stages. Uh, it was it was in a couple of different places. The, obviously, their home, the 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 sub the semi basement mm-hmm. was a set because they had to flood it. And mm-hmm. all that. But then the um, the parks house. Uh, and there's actually uh, a cool behind the scene picture of, you know, the scene where she's outside doing the hammer throw. Mm-hmm. It's just the first story of the house behind them. And then on top of the first story is just blue screen. Oh, like the second story of the that. house I didn't is know digital. Yeah. And then the trees and the sky and everything else yeah. is, all, is all comped in. You know, is a house designed by a famous architect. Yeah. And then the production designer not being able to copy that, they just didn't. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, they're like, no. They built it, they built it from scratch. Yeah. So that's, that's one that mm-hmm. I was, frankly, very surprised by. Mm-hmm. There's another, they actually, the film was edited on Final Cut Pro 7. Literally. You looking at yes. that one, too? <laughs> what do you think about that? That's, you know. Fine, if anybody's not a video mm-hmm. editor, at a Final Cut 7 was a, an op, it was obsolete as, what, 2011? Yeah, so that's when I learned how to edit on in college. Yeah. And it was out of date by the time I was out of college. Because there was Final Cut 11, and Final Cut X came after after that, and that's when Final Cut died altogether. And then Premiere, everybody switched to Premiere in like 2014, 2015, something like that. Yeah. So like Final, the fact that a a movie, a feature film in 2019 was edited on Final Cut Pro 7 is bananas. It's wild. Do they say why? Is it, it just uh, the editor liked it or something? I mean, there can't be yeah. a reason why. It's, mm-hmm. that's, that's literally it. <laughs> it's just that that's the one that he wanted? Yeah. Here, quote, I use Final Cut Pro 7. I have been using this program for more than 20 years, and I think it is the most con- convenient and stable program. But since Apple does not support the program anymore, I needed to maintain a, the OS at Mac OS Yosemite. I always start <laughs> editing from the first scene. Both may begin with rough cuts. For Parasite onset that is where on-site, on-site edits or the assembly edits, so I watched the entire on-set edits first and then refined from the scene number one. It's kind of wild because, you know, yeah. like, to nerd out about editing programs for a minute. Do it. Yeah. Right? This was a 32-bit program, which meant it could only utilize four gigs of RAM, and they probably shot this. I'm I'm assuming – do you know what they shot this know. on? I'm going to go – you continue your thing. I'll, I'll look I mean, up. like – they had they either shot this on 35 millimeter film or they shot it on a high resolution digital camera. Mm-hmm. Either way, it has a high resolution, and editing high resolution high resolution video on a computer that can only leverage four gigabytes of RAM to edit mm-hmm. is they shot it on an Alexa. They shot it on an Alexa, yeah. So like how Final Cut Pro 7 handled footage proxy from footage, proxy, yeah, it was proxy, it was proxy like, yeah. footage. It's it's wild. I mm-hmm. used to use that. I used to use that program at an old job, and I refused to upgrade to fu- to Adobe mm-hmm. because it took three times as long for it to render video files. So I was technically working when video files were rendering. <laughs> so I wanted the program <laughs> that did it slow. <laughs> You're doing it slow. That's a uh, life hack. Yeah, mm-hmm. from my Calbro. Um, uh, here's another one. Uh, the Bong Joon Ho first conceived of the film as a play. That's the one I just found. Which did is you, yeah, yeah I, which is so interesting because I could totally see it as a play. There's uh, not a lot of locations. Not a lot stopping it from being a play right now. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this, so the story came uh, first Musical. came to Bong Joon Ho in 2013, <laughs> right as he was <laughs> finishing Snowpiercer. Uh, but he was encouraged by a theater actor friend to write it up as a play, which later inspired uh, Bong Joon Ho to reflect back on his back on his time tutoring for the son of a wealthy family in Seoul in his early 20s before he came into his own as a filmmaker. So what you're trying to tell me is he started working on this movie while he was making Snowpiercer. Yeah. Your I, favorite movie. A movie? I had also read that he he finished Snowpiercer and then he wrote like a like a 15 page treatment yeah. for mm-hmm. the front half of mm-hmm. the movie. Maybe. Uh, maybe and then oh. he gave it to because he's he's there's a co-writing credit. There's mm-hmm. another guy that's writing, and he was actually he was an assistant of Bong Joon Ho's on Snowpiercer, mm-hmm. from yeah. what I understand. And he wrote, he went and wrote a screen a, a draft of that first half of the movie. Um. And then Bong Joon Ho went and made Okja, which that's yeah. another movie that yeah. I thought I think is. Pretty sweet. And yeah, no, I, 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 it's I, such okay. a fun movie. I was just talking. I, I like don't. Weird th- giant yes. hippo creature. I really like Okja, <laughs> and I feel like I forget about it because it's not my favorite. Oh, movie, well, and it was just for Netflix, movies. and it yeah, was yeah. you know. But yeah. yeah, Okja was such a like weird. A little movie. little girl. I mean, it was a Miyazaki. It was a live action yeah. Miyazaki yeah. film. You know, it got like, a recent shout out in that in that show. Uh, God, what, Poker Face. Yeah. Yeah. That? yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. It's it, that was a good one. Yeah, it's crazy. It just almost sounds like he, you know, he got done making that one movie and he's like, "You know what? I could probably tell this story better." Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's what Wait, are you saying Snow Wait, Oak that's what was than going on in his, in his head. What? Um, Wait, what are you saying is better than the other? So, here, nah, here's another Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> here's a, here's another quote from from Bong Joon-ho that that uh uh shout out to Tayo for for digging this one up too, but um so Tyler, he, the real he, hero. talking mm-hmm. talking about how uh, whether or not it was possible for him to ever free his dad at mm-hmm. the end of this, Bong Joon Ho claimed that it would take 540 years for Ki Woo to buy the home based on his like earning potential, right? Oh. Yeah. So he did the math. He said it would take 540 years. I, don't, I guess I don't know if he did the math or not, but uh, it's, it's very specific. Though. We uh, no. Let's see. The quote is: uh, "The ending is like the desire of a parasite wanting to swallow up its host." But realistically, mm-hmm. it would be very difficult for him to buy the house. We actually calculated how long it would take with his average salary, and it would take around 540 years. What for a coincidence! It's probably around uh. the same amount of time it would take us to buy a house in Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's also how long it's going to take to build that train track around the entire world. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's some things you didn't first. know. Yeah. Things you didn't know yeah. about Parasite. Uh, who's your MVP for this movie? Bond. This is the most, uh, the, the, the person in front of or behind the camera that without whom this movie would be something different. Yeah, definitely Bong Joon Ho. Like I said earlier, I love uh, Song King Ho in this movie, and they're great collaborators, him and Bong, but it's Bong. I'm going to disagree. Uh, I mean, obviously... The dude wrote and directed the movie, and it's yeah. outstanding. And so, yeah, he's he's high in the running. But I'm gonna go with the madame. <gasps> oh, really? Young jo, I think she is, and we've we've touched on it. She is so sweet and naive mm-hmm. and oblivious and stupid and mm-hmm. like so easily manipulated. Um, that if that's not the face of this wealth gap and this mm-hmm. class struggle. Like and and like the the root of the problem of her being just dumb and worthless and entitled. Yeah. Um, if she mm-hmm. doesn't do that mm-hmm. in like a sympathetic way, like the way the way we feel about this movie and the way we feel about the Kims is, is I think completely different. Yeah. Like yeah. there's a version of that character that is that's spiteful and yeah. weird from the start, mm-hmm. and she doesn't get that way until we're meant to see her that way in the car. And only after for an the instant. And only for yeah. a minute. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's only got that one. She, and she, all she is is excited to throw a big birthday party for her son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's when her, you know, her 1% shows, you know? Like, yeah. So, but I think her performance is, is really key to selling that turn, right? Mm-hmm. It's, I, I, it, she's incredible in yeah. the whole movie. No, she's great and in it. Buy yeah. me drugs, buy me buy drugs. Buy me drugs. <laughs> is so goddamn funny. Like, it's really funny. Just yeah. one, one more thing about how much this like movie utterly destroyed at the box office, right? Yeah. Like outside, it's like fifteen million budget, fifteen million dollar budget that mm-hmm. brought in like two hundred and sixty-five million, right? This this movie sold ten million admissions in South Korea, meaning that it roughly one fifth of the South Korean population went to go see this in theaters. Twenty percent of 20% the entire percent of the entire country, <laughs> like. No, it cleaned up. It yep. it killed, man. That's an incredible number when you think about it. Yeah. You imagine twenty percent. I mean, that's that's like Gone with the Wind numbers, like yeah. when that yeah. was in theaters for in like one, what nineteen thirty nine. Let's let's reduce it even farther. For one piece of content, to get that much, pl- yeah. <laughs> that much of the pop of any that's like given population. Yeah. Super Bowl numbers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're running out of time, but we got time for one more segment. Mm-hmm. Calibro, if you please. Oh. Oh, yes, that's right. It's the time where we talk about how this movie would have been significantly improved or not significantly improved with the with the addition of Nicolas Cage to any character you all see fit. Where's Where's Nick where Cage? Gonna, I think we all. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say we all have the, the exact page. same answer. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're no, gonna no, go no, one, two, two, three, and an answer. You ready? Yeah. yeah. One, two, three. The basement husband guy. in the basement. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's the easiest yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. If he like that would have been in 2019. That would have been yeah. Matt Damon and Interstellar levels of incredible. Yeah. Uh, and this is what here's 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 where I'll be I'll go different. Like that's the only option. Like no, there's the only a, answer. No, I, I, I agree. Think there, I, I think there's a second. I think. Well, I think, it's a I think there's. I think that's the only realistic option to put Nicolas Cage in this movie. But it's an option that makes the movie worse. Yes. It's it, Matt Damon in Interstellar. Just like you, you get, you get kicked in the butt straight out of that movie mm-hmm. when he shows up. And if they would, 
<laughs> if in the middle of this fantastic sequence of revealing all of the steps that it takes to reveal that there's yeah. a man living in this basement, and at the end of that sequence, it's f***ing Nicolas Cage. You know what? You know what? You yeah. No, it would ruin the movie. You're convincing me here. I do. I agree that the interstellar, the Matt Damon interstellar turn is often yeah. awful. Not often, <laughs> awful. So I it's am. Often, I'm, often. I'm, yeah. if you, every time you I, watch yeah. it, I would wager it's so just as bad. I'm here by changing my vote. And I'm changing my vote to the father. No. And let me let me explain why. Because I do think there's one scene in particular, which we have managed not to discuss, uh -oh. but I, I still am a big fan of this scene, that Nick Cage particularly would excel at this, is the uh, scene where he's testing the where he's testing uh, Mr. Kim as the driver and he's just mm. in the back seat holding the coffee cup mm -hmm. and just like watching to see if it spills and <laughs> oh, talking you're talking about Mr. Park. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, not the main I guy, thought you were talking about Mr. Kim. No, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Park. Okay. Mr. Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And he's just like, you know, like the elitist like rich patriarch and he's just kind of like like having Nicolas Cage like just going off on like he, you know, he gets close to the line but he doesn't yeah. like yeah. that's the kind of weird shit that he'd throw like it would a be spice Cam. Right. Yeah, yeah. A guy famous for crossing lines yeah. in every I mean, arena of his life to to play a character who's obsessed with people not crossing yeah. lines. Yeah. Would, that would be something. And there would also be a little bit of some of the subtext, some of the sort of tangential themes that the you know how, how colonialism how you, and, yeah. and all of that. How do you think yeah. having an American? How, how do you think yeah. that sex scene would go if that was oh Nicolas God. Cage? Yeah. Oh, oh God. Well, I will say we haven't. We <laughs> I don't haven't want to. Yeah, I don't want it either. <laughs> I'm back out. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't mentioned it yet, but there is a. Uh, a TV show being made yeah. about Parasite. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a chance that Nick Cage could be playing someone. I, I don't think they've like uh, mentioned who, like, what's it about, though? I, know I feel Tilda like that guy Greenlit is out. Yeah, That's she like, was cast, but yeah, now she's yeah, out. Yeah, that got Greenlit a while ago, and then I, I haven't heard anything about yeah, it. Yeah, like back in, like I think, 2020. Shor shortly after. Yeah, the, this, yeah. and it was like Adam up. McKay, I think, was attached to it. So that's Parasite. That's Parasite. That's Parasite. That's really, Parasite. Where... Yeah. where did you get Did you get have it on your list? I, I, I think I, I did. did. Yeah. Number I, five, top ten. Number five. Number five. I love this movie. Okay. And I, like I said, I love Bong, and this, you know, it's again, like I said earlier, really close to Memories of Murder for me. But like, I just, he's a master of his craft here, and I, I, I come back I, to that movie all the time. It's incredible. It's a yeah. really, really solid movie. I think I was too scared of recency, like being accused of oh, recency bias, think, to put something that recent is, in my top my ten. List. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not on your list at all. No, not on my list at all. Uh, not on mine either. This is an this is an uh, Alex, this was an Alex yeah. And you put it at number five. That <laughs> outranks Independence Day now. So oh it's, my God, yeah. That actually uh, per hang on per our algorithm. Yeah. Seventy one. Seventy one. Hey, Seventy one on the Cinefix Top 100. Got it to, oh, and Dan probably didn't have it on his list Dan, either. Dan, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey Dan, Dan, let you have that in yeah. on your list. Uh, it's yeah. crazy how you can talk to Dan in your ear and he answers in my ear. No, <laughs> no, he didn't. It was um, literally a solo Alex Stedman joint. You're uh, welcome. On the strength everyone. of it being your fifth favorite movie of all time. Yep. Yep. I just, like, I'm, I could have a whole, like, episode about why I don't really think recency bias is a thing for me because I don't think it's stronger than nostalgia. So if I, mm. like, if I see something and I'm like, oh, my God, this outranks this, this, and this, this movie that I've loved my whole entire life. Yeah. And I like there's there are a few movies that I've gone back to more in the past four years since it's come out more than Parasite. I just I, I immediately connected with this movie and I just love it. There's yeah. nothing wrong with it in my eyes. I just think it's perfect and it's just a masterpiece through and through. That's I've I've never thought about recency bias in yeah. context of nostalgia. Yeah, because like, nostalgia is a powerful thing. Well, and they're polar opposites, right? Yeah. Hell of a drug. Yeah. yeah, hell of a drug. Yeah. Hell of a drug. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks for talking about Parasite. Uh, number seventy one on the Cinefix Top 100. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't put it on my Top 100, but I am totally fine. I'm glad fine I got it in there. You know what? I'll take it. Parasite being number 71 on the Cinefix Top 100. Yeah. Um, but next week, we will be talking about a very similar film, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? hey -o. Basically the same thing. Love basically, it. basically the same. A lot of staircases in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but join us next week when we're going to be talking about uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And thank you for watching the Cinefix Top 100. We'll see you next time. Thank you.